All right, hey you guys, it's Swag and Swag, and I'm coming to you with my review of Kagawane episode eight, Memories, and this episode, because as you all know, well maybe none of you guys know, I don't even know if anybody's watching this video, but that's neither here nor there. For those of you who have been keeping up with Kagawane, it is in a second season now, which I I didn't like I freaking loved the show I loved it and I reviewed it for a while I had a few people who commented and said that they didn't they couldn't get into the show blah 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 but the show has been getting pretty fucking epic as of late and I finally did get to catch back up to it but the show is fucking awesome oh my god it's like a scary movie that's like seven minutes long this this show is freaking amazing and I love it and I love the fact that it is only like seven or eight minutes which is nice it made it really easy for me to catch back up but and like in the second season because the first season ended off where um Bamba or Bamba uh who is the professor who had the scar on the side of his face um he like the season pretty much ended with him absorbing a kagawane which we find out later on like in these i believe it's the second season when they start talking about it that um the reason why he was able to take on the kagawane was because of the bite on the side of his face because it actually happened when he was younger he used to get locked in a I guess it was like a church. I don't know what kind of building it was, but he used to get locked in there and he would go upstairs and look out the window and the Kagawane attacked his village. And uh, this woman whom actually was saved by, who was she saved by? I wanna say it was probably, I think it was one of his ancestors. She was saved by him because she had actually come to the village to killed the Kagawane because her people had been chasing the Kagawane for years. And it turns out that her people were actually the ones who released or created the Kagawane. And, um, which is actually kind of freaky if you think about the, like, how it was created because the Kagawane was created from a lot of different animals thrown into a pit and then they all, like, started to devour each other and it turned, I guess, in essence into this abnormal creature, which is the creature that we see that, uh, is pretty much like a shadow and it eats people's shadows. And the reason why all these other creatures had been turned into Kagawane was because the Kagawane got dispersed when this woman whom actually got her arm bit off by the Kagawane which is the old woman who actually saved Bamba from this other girl which we find out in this episode um how she got her uh tuning fork from her father her father made the tuning fork to ward off kagawane so whenever she would hit it on something it would send the kagawane away but um we find out that the elderly woman the one that actually saved bonba was the one who inadvertently because she said that the way to kill kagawane was to burn it and she shot it a few times when it like crawled up a boat trying to get to this man and uh she shot it a few times and they caught the uh the sail on fire that it was on and the kagawane burned or whatever and it like dispersed itself across i guess well i guess across japan because different creatures who ate the flakes of the kagawane became mutated and became these big creatures which is like like the one that they showed in the first episode that looked like a huge dinosaur which actually turned out to be just a lizard or the jellyfish one that was actually a person on the inside and all of these kagawane that have been appearing across the nation are actually originated from the original kagawane like burnt flakes <laughs> i guess is the best way to explain it but I did not think that the show was going to be that in-depth because 
I freaking, like I said, I loved this show. I loved it when it first came on. I started watching it and I was like, this show is actually pretty freaking awesome. And you can tell from like the first season to the second season that they stepped their game up on the animation because it's more like a stop motion anime, which I really don't mind in the slightest because the actual animation is really, is beautiful. If I do say so myself, it's like watching a painting, which is like, it speaks to me on a deep level. But the story behind it is just phenomenal too. They did an amazing job and it pretty much came full circle. And I liked that in this episode, episode eight, Memories in season two or act two as they call it, um, we got to see, like I said, we got to see where the girl got the tuning fork from and how, not necessarily how the Kagawane was created, but how they were trying to use it to I guess the best way I can explain it is how they were trying to use it to destroy another village because they took this man hostage, which I'm guessing was the girl's father, and uh, they were trying to get him, the other village was trying to get him to tell them how to control the Kagawane, and he tried to tell, tell them before they put him down in the pit that there is no way to control the Kagawane, and that once it's out, it will devour everything that lives, and... They put him down in the pit and the Kagawane came and devoured him and then it broke out of the well, I guess is the best way you could say it, a well or pit. It broke out of the pit and devoured all of them and then went through the village and devoured the whole village. And then the rival village where the man that was taken came from was like, well, now is our chance. We can go and get our member back and the Kagawane came to their village and devoured all of them too as well as this girl's mother but the mother I thought at one point maybe the Kagawane wasn't gonna kill her because it well he remembered her the man that was eaten remembered who she was and I was like yes maybe maybe she can speak some sense to it and it'll just go away and won't eat her and her daughter but it never works out that well so she was devoured, but the daughter did. Cause at first it looked like the daughter was like, she was just gonna sit there and be eaten. But she did finally hit the tuning fork and it sent the Kagawane back to the pit where it came from. And all of this, like this whole flashback happened in Bamba's mind. So even at the end, he said that he thinks that maybe that was the memories of somebody who was devoured by the Kagawane. But if anything, I would guess that, that would be uh, the little girl's mother because, I mean, there's really no other way unless the Kagawane remembers everything that it's done for it to remember all of that up to the point where it got sent back to the pit. Which, it really fucking sucks because I actually feel a little bad for that little girl because, I mean, she had to see her mother get devoured right in front of her. But, I mean, if that's the case, so did Bonba and a lot of other people that have seen their friends, family, significant others get eaten by the Kagawane, which really fucking sucks. But, as a whole, this show is fucking amazing and I can't wait to see where they go with this because it's... This show is is the shiznit right about now. And if you haven't watched it, I suggest you go watch it. And because each episode is only about seven minutes, it's easy to catch up on. Like, I watched all of the episodes because I think I stopped on, like, episode eight last season. I watched all the episodes and caught back up within, like, two hours, I think. So... Is a is very easy to catch up to and I really suggest that you guys go watch it. It's very intriguing and it's very, very captivating. I fucking love this show. So yeah, so as always, please remember to comment, thumbs up, and subscribe. It helps me a whole lot. And this is Super Key Swag saying adios.